Long ago and far away, there lived a beautiful girl named Cinderella. Her mother had fallen ill and died when Cinderella was a child. Now there were just the two of them, Cinderella and her father. Her father was a kind man who bought her whatever she wanted and gave her delicious food to eat. She lacked nothing, but this situation did not last long. Her father took a new wife, and this new wife brought into the family her own daughters. They were both older than Cinderella, and both of them were mean and spiteful. Then tragedy struck again. Cinderella's father fell off his horse while hunting and died from his injuries. <gasps> father, what shall I do? <laughs> Standing before her father's grave, Cinderella wept. Cinderella's wicked stepmother bought her own children fancy new clothes, but Cinderella was obliged to wear the shabbiest hand-me-downs. Cinderella, bring me some bread, soup, fruit, and some warm milk. Yes, mother, I'll bring it right away. Cinderella, I want you to wash these clothes. Yes, mother. I'm coming to get them now. Truly, Cinderella was treated like a maid and forced to work hard all day long. Don't slack off. You've got cleaning to do. And feed the chickens. Those leaves in the garden. Rake them all up. The very day after her father died, Cinderella was obliged to move from her bedroom to a storage attic where all she had was a bed of straw and a hand mirror. Her hands were chapped, and every night she went to bed still covered with dirt from her day's labors. Cinderella, mend this hem and wash the sheets in my negligees. These two wicked stepsisters were jealous of Cinderella's beauty, so they burdened her with many arduous tasks. One day, the king of that country held a royal party, an extremely important event. For at this party, his son, the prince, was to choose a bride. An invitation arrived at Cinderella's mansion as well. It says all the maidens in the land of 16 years old of age or so should go. As soon as the stepmother had finished reading the invitation, her daughters rejoiced. Oh, boy, yes! Stunning! Why, thank you. Isn't this fun? Which do you fancy? <laughs> that one. What to wear? What to wear? I'm so excited. The two sisters had their pick of a whole wardrobe of fine dresses. Mother, I want to go to the party, too. Don't be silly. You have to mind the house. There's grass to be mown and no end of chores to be done. But, Mother, I'll do whatever you want. Cinderella wanted to go more than anything in the world. How many times do I have to say it? Pushy, aren't you? Cinderella's stepmother would not let her go to the party. The day of the party arrived. So then, Cinderella, you'll mind the house now, won't you? Yes, mother. Sisters. The stepmother knew Cinderella was so lovely and charming hmm. that the prince would fall in love with her right away. She kept Cinderella at home deliberately. In her stepmother's closet, Cinderella discovered a party dress her mother used to wear. What a marvelous dress! I'll wear it to the party! Cinderella hurried to change into it, but it had been enlarged for her stepmother's use. Oh no! What now? And to prevent Cinderella from going to the party, her sisters-in-law had locked up their own dresses in a closet. <laughs> I just want to die and 
be with father and mother in heaven. That very moment, a forest fairy appeared. What's wrong, beautiful girl? <gasps> so Cinderella explained the entire situation to the fairy. The fairy felt sorry for her. Why don't I help you with my magic? Only you must return by midnight. After midnight, the spell will wear off. Abracadabra! With the wave of a magic wand, the fairy dressed Cinderella in a gorgeous dress decorated with rubies and emeralds. Oh my! What a magnificent dress! On her slender feet appeared slippers of shining gold. Thank you so much. You'll go in this. Have a wonderful time. At the castle, the party had just begun. The beautiful Cinderella outshone all the other women at the party. Seeing her, the prince immediately fell in love. Miss, may I have this dance? Yes, with pleasure. The prince and Cinderella got along wonderfully, and it seemed they could dance and dance forever. Indeed, they quite lost track of time, and suddenly... Prince, I must go! Oh. Without even telling him her name, Cinderella raced down the palace stairs. She had to hurry before the magic wore off. When the prince followed, he found one of her golden slippers on the stairs. The woman who wore this golden slipper will be my bride. Find me the woman who wore this golden slipper. The next day, the prince's servants came. We've come from the castle on the king's orders. We are looking for the owner of this golden slipper. Please do come in. Oh, I believe they're mine. The two stepsisters also tried boldly to fit into the slipper. They wanted to wed the prince. Move it! But their feet were so big they simply could not make it fit. Although they tried until their feet bled. Next, it was Cinderella's turn. I want to try too, because... This is my slipper. She tried it, and it fit perfectly. <gasps> Cinderella then put on the other golden slipper. Bells pealed throughout the town as Cinderella was welcomed back to the castle. The wedding was held in the great hall of the castle. The rejoicing fairy made all the bells ring. The king and queen were overjoyed. Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters were ashamed of their past behavior, and they welcomed her marriage from the heart. Cinderella's beauty and gentleness were spoken of throughout the land, and everyone celebrated, one and all wishing that the royal couple might live happily ever after. This story happened on a cold, cold night in the middle of winter. In fact, it was New Year's Eve. Matches! Matches! Who'll buy my matches? Who'll buy my matches? They burn brightly. Please buy some! A young girl matches, was trying matches. her best to Who'll sell matches. matches. 
but no one paid any attention to her. Hey, mister. Would you like to buy some matches? The good matches. They burn very well. Please, buy just one box. Ah, uh, you're a nuisance. Stop bothering me. I'm a busy man. Ah. Uh, the man scolding made her sad. But she soon recovered and began selling matches again. Hold by my matches. They burn brightly. Matches, matches. The little girl kept trying and matches. trying to sell her matches. Matches, matches. Hold by my matches. They burn brightly. Please buy some. Matches, matches. Hold by my matches. Matches, matches. They burn brightly. Who'll buy some? <sighs> she had walked and walked, but hadn't sold a single match. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Papa. <gasps> she could see a happy family inside having dinner. <laughs> stood at the window a while, watching them. If only I had a nice family and could eat dinner like that, she thought. But that was an impossible dream. But then something terrible happened. A horse and carriage came racing down the road right at her. She had lost her shoes when she dodged the carriage. Where are my shoes? Where are my shoes? It grew late and the snow fell even harder. It's New Year's Eve. No one will even think about buying matches tonight. What will I do? If I don't sell any, my drunken father will beat me. If I don't do something soon, I'll freeze to death. <laughs> ah, I know. The poor girl reached for her match basket. I'll light a match to help keep me warm. Ah, <gasps> oh, it's so bright. And so warm. It went out! the flame, she saw a miracle. There before her eyes appeared a warm room with a fireplace. <gasps> it looks so warm! The miracle didn't last long. I've got to let another.
Look at that wonderful cheese! It's my favorite! There before her was her grandmother, who had passed away. She was smiling kindly, just as she had in life. Come here, child. Grandma! My dear child, I've been watching over you from heaven. Really? Grandma, I've always thought of you too. Whenever I was hurt, or lonely, or sad. Oh, that makes me happy. You've suffered so much, but everything's all right now. From now on, we'll always be together. Really, Grandma? I'm so happy. Well then, shall we go? Oh, yes. <gasps> Basking in joy, the little girl and her grandmother rose to heaven in a ball of light. They were going to a land where people were never cold or hungry, a world without pain or sorrow. Morning dawned, a new year. A crowd had gathered in front of the church. A young girl was lying there. But no one there knew how beautiful and bright and wonderful her New Year's Eve had been. She had gone to heaven. In the deepest part of the ocean, the world is a dark, rich blue. Many beautiful fish swim in clear water of this wonderful paradise. There at the bottom of the sea stands the palace of the Merman King. The queen had died soon after giving birth to six mermaid princesses. The six princesses were cared for by an old mermaid. She taught them about many different lands, including those outside the ocean and about the ways of the world. The palace was made of colorful coral and shells filled with shining pearls. The six princesses grew up quickly. But the youngest princess, the mermaid princess, was the most beautiful of all. Her eyes were aquamarine, and her skin was the color of rose petals. The mermaid princess had a special treasure that she loved very much, the statue of a beautiful boy that had sunk with a ship on the stormy sea. Compared to her older sisters, the mermaid princess liked to be by herself and to dream. She also liked to hear stories about the people who lived on the land. When you turn 15, I'll allow you to swim to the surface. Really? really? How, wonderful. How wonderful! You'll be able to see people on boats. 
The town near the shore, the green forests, the birds flying in the sky, the dazzling sun, and the beautiful fragrant flowers. Time passed and the older sister turned 15. She saw many things and then returned home. She had so much to tell her sisters. She described a castle and a vineyard she had seen. She talked about the music she had heard, the chirping of the birds, the morning sun shining like a red rose, and the golden sunset. It would be five more years before the mermaid princess could go. She couldn't wait to see the outside world. Finally, her 15th birthday arrived. The mermaid princess swam up to the surface. There she saw something more wonderful than anything she had ever heard about. It was a prince on the deck of a sailing ship. They were having a party on the ship in honor of his birthday. What a handsome prince! What a fine person he must be! Suddenly the sky grew black. It was a terrible storm and the ship sank. The mermaid princess searched frantically for the prince. When the prince opened his eyes, the mermaid princess was hidden behind the rocks on the shore. Then a pretty human girl approached. Ah! Thank you for saving me. I owe you my life. The prince looked into the girl's eyes and smiled. I saved the prince, but he doesn't even notice me. How cruel! In tears, the mermaid princess swam back to the palace under the sea. But she just couldn't forget the prince. I want to see him again. Unable to bear it any longer, she told her sisters everything. All right, we'll take you to him. The sisters took her to a cove near the shore where the prince's castle stood. My dear prince, I can only be human. Let me tell you about the difference between humans who live on land and we who live in the sea. When humans die, they are given eternal souls. Mermaids can live 300 years, but when we die, we disappear like foam into the sea. Every day, the mermaid princess swam to the shore beneath the castle balcony so that she could see the prince. There's only one way for me to get the eternal soul that the old mermaid told me about. Prince and I must promise our eternal love. Making up her mind to become human, she went to visit the Witch of the Sea. I know exactly why you have come. Take this potion, one drink, and your fins will become two legs. When you walk like a human, it will hurt you like you're walking on glass. And I will take your beautiful voice away from you. If you fail to win the prince's love, you'll disappear like foam on the following day. With this, I can be by the prince's side. She drank the potion on the shore and became human. Enduring the sharp pain in her feet, she walked to the prince's castle. How beautiful you are. Please stay here in the castle and play the harp for us. I'm so happy that I can be by your side and take care of you. The mermaid princess was beside herself with joy. 
Although she couldn't speak, the prince was very kind to her. He gave her a beautiful dress made of silver and gold thread and a sparkling necklace. They played music together, he on the violin, she on the harp. Time went by, and the prince became engaged to the princess of a neighboring land. It's all because I have no voice and can't tell the prince my true feelings. Unless I show him, I'll disappear like the foam the day after they marry. We gave the witch of the sea our hair in return for this knife. If you stab the prince with it, you'll be a mermaid again! The mermaid princess took the knife, but she couldn't bring herself to stab the prince. just to be by his side. I left the family I love and sacrificed my beautiful voice. And in return for that suffering, I could spend some joyful time with him. But now his love belongs to his new bride. Goodbye, my prince! I hope you always be happy! And as the sun rose in the sky, she disappeared like foam into the sea. The prince, who knew nothing about it, married the princess and lived very happily. The princess gave birth to a daughter who looked just like the mermaid princess. The mermaid princess had disappeared like foam, but she had been given an eternal soul. She was reborn into the world as their baby princess. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her mother near a forest. The cute girl had white skin and looked very nice in a riding hood. So her grandma made a hood from red velvet and gave it to her on her birthday. Wow! That red hood looks just right! You look lovely! Quack, quack. Everyone praised the girl, and so she wore her red riding hood every day. Soon, everyone called the girl Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said to her, In this basket, there is some wonderful wine, cheese, and a fresh raspberry pie. I want you to take this to Grandma who is sick in bed. Wow, it looks great. As soon as Grandma eats this, she'll be fine. Don't wander on your way there. All right, Mother. Goodbye. Don't worry. Grandma's house was on the other side of the great forest. Little Red Riding Hood went down the straight road, and she met a wolf. Well, well, don't you look good in that Red Riding Hood? And where are you headed off to? Little Red Riding Hood didn't know how dangerous the wolf was. I'm off to the other side of the forest to visit my grandma, who is sick in bed. Well now, if you go down the road a little, there's a field of flowers. If you pick some and take them to your grandma, I'm sure she'd be happy. Oh, Grandma would love that. Thank you. Little Red Riding Hood forgot all about her promise to her mother not to wander off the road. She went to the field of flowers and began gathering as many as she could. I'll take all these flowers to Grandma. <laughs> I'll leave the delicious little red riding hood for later and go to her grandmother's house and eat the old lady first. 
The bad, hungry wolf made a plan to eat Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma both. He ran swiftly through the forest to Grandma's house. The wolf arrives at Grandma's house and... <laughs> it's Little Red Riding Hood with something to make you feel better. Oh, thank you, Little Red Riding Hood. How is my adorable little girl? Come right in. Oh! Ah! Grandma was completely fooled and opened the door. The wolf came inside and attacked Grandma. He quickly gobbled her up for a meal. <sighs> that was delicious. Next comes Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf dressed up like Grandma and climbed into bed to wait for the little girl. Little Red Riding Hood came to the house singing a song. She knocked on Grandma's door, unaware of the danger. Grandma! Hello, Grandma! It's Little Red Riding Hood with some wine and cheese and pie for you. Little Red Riding Hood, come right in, dear. She entered the house and went to the bed. But she noticed there was something different about Grandma today. My, oh my, Grandma, what big ears you have. To which the wolf replied, All the better to hear you with, my dear. Grandma, what giant frightful eyes you have. The wolf replied to her, All the better to see you with, my dear. And Grandma, oh, what a giant mouth you have. The wolf replied, This mouth is for eating you all up in ah! one bite. Ah! In the blink of an eye, the wolf swallowed Little Red Riding Hood. She was as tasty as I imagine. <laughs> My stomach couldn't be happier. The wolf was very pleased with his full stomach and quickly fell asleep in bed snoring. The wolf's loud snoring echoed throughout the forest. Hmm? A hunter who was hunting nearby heard the snoring and came to the house. That's strange. This should be the house where Grandma lives, but that snoring is too loud to be hers. Something's not right. And what did he find? The wolf was asleep on Grandma's bed with his mouth wide open and tongue hanging out and snoring in a deep sleep. Wicked wolf, you've eaten Grandma, and you snore like the devil, but you'll pay for it. The hunter was very angry and aimed his rifle at the wolf to finish him with one shot. But just then, something began to move inside the wolf's stomach. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Grandma is still alive inside the wolf's stomach. I'm sure of it. The hunter took a jackknife from his belt and slit the wolf's stomach wide open. First, Little Red Riding Hood came out. <sighs> I could hardly breathe. I'm saved. She took a deep breath. <sighs> I was so afraid. Next, Grandma came tumbling out. Grandma, are you all right? She's still breathing. Grandma! Grandma! Open your eyes! Grandma had fainted from the shock. Little Red Riding Hood had an idea to help her. She took the delicious wine her mother had given her and gave some to Grandma. After a moment, Grandma's eyes opened. My little red riding hood. Grandma, I'm so glad to see you. You're safe. Little red riding hood and Grandma hugged each other happily. <sighs> Sorry, wolf, but we'll have to punish you. What will you do to him? 
Ah, I have the perfect idea. There, that'll do it. They stuffed the wolf's stomach full of stones. Then Little Red Riding Hood sewed his stomach shut. The wolf woke up as usual. <sighs> what a nap! I'm still full! Guess I should be getting back now. Hey, hey! My stomach! It's so heavy! What's this? What's that? What the is wolf this? tried his best to walk, but couldn't make progress. Ah! Then... Mr. Wolf, your days of bad deeds are through! <laughs> With the wolf gone, the three of them had a party. They shared the cheese and raspberry pie. That's when Grandma said... Heavens, what delicious pie! And the cheese and wine are splendid! Mmm, what a treat! Little Red Riding Hood told Grandma everything about how she fell for the wolf's trick and became late. Little Red Riding Hood, always listen to what your mother tells you, or else something bad might happen again, okay? Okay, Grandma, I'll be more careful! Now, that's my good little girl. <laughs> Goodbye! You take care! After leaving Grandma's house, Little Red Riding Hood went straight home without taking a single step off the road. Mother had a worried look on her face and was waiting in front of the house for Little Red Riding Hood. Mother, I'm home! Little Red Riding Hood hugged her mother and said, I'm sorry I'm late. I'll never, ever wander off the road again. Sorry. Mother did not get angry at Little Red Riding Hood. Long ago, in a forest in England, there lived a mother with her three little pigs. The first little pig was an idle little pig who liked to eat all the time, so he was very fat. The second little pig was a lazy little pig who liked to sleep all the time, so he never got much done. And the third little pig was a tiny little pig who was very timid, so he was afraid of everything. One day, it was time for the three little pigs to leave home and set out to make their fortunes. Mother, we, we will build, build our own splendid houses, houses and you will be the first to visit. <sighs> Said the three little pigs and each set off on his way. As the first little pig was an idle little pig, he had a farmer give him some straw and quickly built himself a house of straw, since that was the easiest to build. Then he invited his mother to visit. I wonder if this house will be all right if a stormy wind blows, said the mother, looking a bit worried. As the second little pig was a lazy little pig, he had a woodsman give him a bunch of wood and built himself a house of wood, since all he needed was a hammer and nails. Then he invited his mother to visit. I wonder if this house will be all right in a fire. Mother looked worried again. As the third little pig was a timid little pig, he had a mason give him some bricks and set about building himself a sturdy house of bricks. But since he had to lay the bricks with mortar one by one, it took a very long time. Are you still building your house, you slowpoke? We've already finished ours. Although his big brothers teased him, the third little pig just ignored them. Day in and day out, he stacked one brick at a time. <laughs> to
to make his house of bricks until the house was finally done. Just then, along came a hungry, big, bad wolf to the forest. Mmm, I smelled some yummy little pigs. <laughs> first, the big, bad wolf came to the house of the first little pig. Hey, little pig, open up! Who's there? What a yummy looking fat pig! <laughs> Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down! <gasps> so the big bear wolf blew the house down and swallowed up the first little pig in one big gulp. <clears throat> that was good, but I still want more to eat. Next, the big bad wolf came to the house of the second little pig. Hey, open up! Mm. Mm. <laughs> there he is. I'll light a fire and burn this house down in a jiffy. <laughs> So the big bad wolf burned the house down and swallowed up the second little pig in one big gulp. Oh, I'm full, but I think I could eat just one more little pig. Finally, the big bad wolf came to the house of the third little pig. Huh? <laughs> Hey, little pig, open up! Nobody's home! Oh, yeah? Well, then I'll roast you up like your little brother. <laughs> What's wrong? That flame was too tiny. How about this, huh? Shoot! Drat! All right, then, watch this! I'll knock your house down! Ha! Ouch! What a sturdy house! Ah! Oh. Hmm. So, the big bad wolf had to think. I got it! I'll meet him at the bakery, and then... <laughs> hey, little pig! At three o'clock, there'll be fresh bread at the bakery! Boy, am I hungry, but it's got to be some kind of trick. So, at two, the little pig went to the bakery ah. to outsmart the big bad wolf. <laughs> that little pig will be here soon. I'll just wait. Mm. Oh. Oh, what's keeping that stupid pig? Hey, little pig, it's past three o'clock. Aren't you going to the bakery? I already went to the bakery at two o'clock. Damn, that's smart, Alec! Mm. So, the big bad wolf had to think again. I know, I'll never met the town bazaar. <laughs> hey, little pig, there's a bazaar tomorrow morning at six o'clock. There'll be all kinds of shops. A bazaar sounds fun. Thanks for the tip. See you tomorrow at six then. But the little pig went to the bazaar at five to outsmart the big bad wolf again. When I get home, I'll make apple jam in this barrel. <laughs> but the big bad wolf got there first this time and lay in wait for the little pig. Here he comes. Hey, little pig! <laughs> Thought you could fool me, huh? I've been waiting for you since yesterday. I know! What do I do? I'd better hide! You're mine now! 
Oh, no! Oh! Oh! The barrel with the little pig in it banged into the big bad wolf, hurting him a great deal. I'll get you for this! When the big bad wolf got all better, he came back to the house of the bricks. You... You pesky little pig. This time I'll climb down the chimney and get you once and for all. <laughs> Big Bad Wolf is trying to climb down the chimney. Well, I'll show him. <laughs> Here goes. <laughs> The little pig quickly put a big pot of water on the fire to boil. My, it's getting hot, but never mind. Soon I'll be eating that tasty little pig. I made it. The water in the pot is ready. Say your prayers, little pig. Uh, what's cooking? Oh, it's me! Ah! After doing away with the big bad wolf, the third little pig could finally invite his mother to visit. You were always a timid little pig, but it looks like you were the smartest too. The third little pig was still a timid little pig, but he lived happily and bravely ever after. Tom Sawyer lived in the small town of St. Petersburg, near the banks of America's Mississippi River. Tom, his younger brother Sid, and their cousin Mary were raised together by Aunt Polly. Tom was always doing something to vex Aunt Polly. For example... Now you paint this fence nicely. You hear? Sure. Easy. Leave it to me. But Tom left the work to his friends and sneaked off to play. One day, Tom went with his friend Huck to see a haunted house outside of town. There's got to be treasure in that house. I bet there is. For real, let's go! Tom and Huck had a dream to become bandits and to live as they pleased. They went everywhere in the old house, searching and searching. Finally, when they came to the room that was furthest in back... Huck, there's something underneath this. Great, let's have a look. <gasps> a treasure <gasps> chest! Tom and Huck were overjoyed and pulled up the treasure chest. Found it at last! Ha <laughs> ha! This is great! <gasps> it's empty! Oh. Oh. After all that trouble, it's empty! Got it? <gasps> it's marked with a cross. That's where we bury the treasure. Yeah, I got it. <gasps> Huck, did you hear that? Looks like they have treasure. But we don't know where the cross is. <gasps> Look, they're heading for the mountains. Tomorrow you go there and look for them, okay? And what will you do tomorrow? Uh, well, I've got to go on a school picnic. <laughs> the next day, Tom and his schoolmates took a steamboat ride to go visit some caves. These caves were a popular attraction. All right, children. Don't go too far into the caves. Come back before your candle goes out. Understood? Bye! The children proceeded deep into the cave, marking their way with candle smoke. Ah! Nobody's followed us, right? How could they? We'd spot them a mile off. Meanwhile, 
Huck had found the two thieves up in the mountains. They were talking and going even further into the mountains. So Huck made haste to follow. In the cave, Tom and the others found a waterfall unlike any they'd ever seen before, with shiny pebbles in the stream that flowed from it and bizarre rock formations. Tom and Becky were amazed as they walked and walked further and further into the cave. Suddenly, they realized that they were all alone. Say, Tom, let's go back and join the others. Oh no, I forgot to mark our way. What? You mean you don't know the way back? Teacher, Tom and Becky are still in the cave. Oh my goodness. Quick, we have to tell the townspeople. When they heard, the townspeople went to the cave to help the two lost children. About then, ah. Huck lost track of the two villains he had been trailing. They had disappeared. He had come to the end of the trail. Where had the two men gone? <sighs> Meanwhile, back in the cave, the two children's candles had gone out. They were stuck. Tom, if we can't get out, we'll die in here. We'll get out for sure. Come on, let's find a way out. Somebody's coming! They'll help us! But as they drew closer, Tom realized they were the scary men he'd seen with Huck. Tom and <laughs> Becky fled in a heartbeat. Hmm, somebody else is messing around down here. Wait! Darn! They ran out on us. Well, if we find them, we'll rip them apart. What do we do, Tom? The path those two were on must have a way out. Let's go look. The two children once again set forth fearfully to find an exit. Meanwhile, up in the mountains, Huck was looking for the two men and trying to find an entrance. A way in! A way in! Hey! It moved! This has got to be the entrance! That's the way out! Hurry! <laughs> Looks like we can get out from here! This is heavy! It won't budge! That sounds like Hug's voice! What are you doing in there? That can wait. We gotta get out of here, or we're in trouble! Okay, I'll pull on this side. You pull on that side. You punks, gotcha now! <laughs> Tom and Becky made their escape. The two villains had done bad things before. Knowing this, the townspeople who had come to look for Tom and Becky captured the two men. Tom spent the next few days lazing around as before, but then... 
Those two bad guys must have buried the treasure in the cave. No doubt about it. Say you're right. Let's go dig it up. The two friends walked many miles back to the cave, where they started looking for treasure again. Then they spotted a rock marked with the sign of a cross. They immediately began to dig just below the sign. And there indeed they uncovered buried treasure. It was packed full of gold and jewels. <laughs> Swell, now we're going to be rich, bandits. You said it. It isn't known whether Tom and Huck became bandits. But they made it back to town all right, where their chest full of treasure caused quite a sensation. And Tom and Huck became the most famous people in the whole town. In the wide plains of Kansas, a little girl named Dorothy lived on a farm with her Uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Dorothy, dear, we're going shopping. Look, Look after, after the, the house, house okay. okay? See you soon! Dorothy had lost both her parents, so her aunt and uncle had taken her in. Just you and me, Toto. <laughs> Toto was a small black dog whom Dorothy loved very much. On that day, a tremendous cyclone appeared and swept Dorothy's house high up in the sky. The house landed in a land far to the east that Dorothy had never seen before. It was a very beautiful country, with flowers blooming everywhere. Welcome to the land of munchkins. <gasps> when Dorothy looked up, she saw the Wizard of the North standing there. I'm the Wizard of the North. Thank you for destroying the Wicked Wizard of the East. I'm very grateful. What? Surprised, Dorothy looked and saw the Wizard of the East crushed beneath the house. Only a pair of silver shoes remained. So, this is in Kansas. How can I get back to Kansas? I wish I could help, but Kansas is too far away for my magic to reach. But perhaps the Great Wizard of Oz can grant your wish. He lives in our beautiful capital, the Emerald City. Just follow this yellow brick road and you'll find him. Then the Wizard of the North gave Dorothy the silver shoes, saying that they would surely be useful someday. It will be a long journey. Take care. Let's go, Toto. We have to find out how to get home to Kansas. After a while, they came upon a scarecrow standing in a field of corn. Hi there! Where are you going? Dorothy was startled when the scarecrow suddenly started talking. She told the scarecrow her story. Wow! Please let me go too! My head's full of straw, so I want to ask for a brain! So, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow continued down the yellow brick road. Suddenly, they heard someone groan in the woods. A man made of tin was standing there with his axe in the air. I'm stuck. Please give me some oil, he said. <coughs> hooray! Hooray! <coughs> I'm a tin woodsman. A wicked witch stole my heart. Let me go with you to the Wizard of Oz to ask for a new one. So the four of them continued on their way. Going deeper into the forest, they came upon a lion walking slowly. Help! It's, it's a, a lion! lion! <laughs> I'm 
such a big coward. The slightest thing sets my heart pounding with fear. It's pathetic. Let me go with you to ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. So the five companions continued walking deep into the woods. Yikes! Huh? It's Kalidada! Oh no! They were being chased by a huge beast with the head of a tiger and the body of a bear. He'll run while he's eating you. How heartless. I know. Cut the bridge with your axe, Tin Woodsman. <laughs> Tin Woodsman cut the bridge and saved everyone. Dorothy and her friends finally arrived at the Emerald City. It was beautiful, with emeralds glistening everywhere. They entered the chambers of the great Wizard of Oz, where a large head was sitting on the throne. I am the Wizard of Oz. Why have you come? Please, sir. I need your help to get back to my home in Kansas. Please give me a brain. I want courage. I want a heart. Very well. Destroy the Wicked Witch of the West, and I will grant your requests. Dorothy and her friends didn't know what to do. How could they defeat the terrifying Wizard of the West? But they had no choice they decided to work together to fight her. They made their way to the terrifying land of the West. Ah, we have visitors. The wizard discovered them and sent 40 wolves. Tin Woodsman fought them all off with his axe. Next, they were attacked by 40 crows. Oh, oh, help! Oh, please help me! Help, Mr. Lion! Please help me! Mr. Lion! Help me! Now's the time to find your courage! Overcoming his fear, the lion roared a mighty roar that made the crows disappear. Take this! The angry wizard used her magic to conjure up a horrible swarm of bees. Just then, Dorothy's silver shoes began to talk. The Wizard of the West can't stand water! You wicked Wizard of the West! Take this! Uh, 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 oh no! Uh, 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 uh. Dorothy and her friends returned to the Emerald City and immediately went to see the Wizard of Oz. But all they found was a small old man. Hmm, I didn't expect you back so soon. Actually, the wizard was just a man who had been blown to Oz in a hot air balloon. You're a fake. What about the courage you promised me? What? Take it easy! Just then, the beautiful Wizard of the South appeared in a shining light. You all work together to defeat the Wicked Wizard of the West. You already have courage, wisdom, and loving hearts. And it was true. Wisdom, courage, and a kind heart are not things that one person can give to another. Dorothy. 
I have cast a spell on your silver shoes. Just walk three steps, and you'll be back in Kansas. Now it's time for you to go home. Your aunt and uncle are waiting. Goodbye, everyone. Dorothy said goodbye, goodbye. to her friends bye -bye. and began her journey back to Kansas. One, two, three. Dorothy! Huh? Dorothy! Uncle Henry and Em! Uncle Henry and Aunt Em were there to greet Dorothy when she arrived. Her adventure was over. Once upon a time, in a small pond, there lived a family of ducks. The mother duck laid many eggs each day and carefully warmed them with her body. It's all right. You can come on out. Then, one morning, With a crispy crackling of their eggshells, a brood of cute little yellow ducklings popped out, one after the other. <laughs> but one large egg remained unhatched. What's the matter with this one? It's the only one that won't hatch. The lady duck next door had a theory. That one's probably turkey egg. No point warming it. It won't hatch. You best get rid of it. No, I think that if I warm it a bit more, it'll hatch. I'll give it a try. Said the mother duck. Three days passed. Almost overnight, it seemed. The little yellow ducklings became expert paddlers, swimming all over the pond. But the mother duck patiently waited for the remaining large egg to hatch. Finally, it's hatching! With a crackle and a crunch, the last large duckling was finally hatched. But what popped out was a gray-colored, scruffy, feathered, ugly duckling. What happened to this one? Dirty coloring and all. I told you this one was a turkey. Quack, quack. But this ugly duckling was paddling around in the pond in no time. When the mother duck saw this, she said, Oh, there you see, a duckling after all. And she raised the ugly duckling with as much care and love as the other ducklings. Go away! You're too ugly to be a duckling! Get lost! The other ducklings would peck at the ugly duckling with their beaks. They'd even steal his food. They simply wouldn't accept the ugly duckling as a member of the family like themselves. When he was paddling around the pond, they'd jump on his back. His feathers were always ruffled and he was always the last one in. <laughs> Why am I the only one who gets picked on? <laughs> Every day he was teased and bullied. Every day he wept. Oh, you poor thing. Are you being teased by your big brothers and sisters? You just hide away here under my wing for a bit. You'll be fine. One fine day, the mother duck lined up all her little ducklings and said, no matter what you're coloring, you have to get along, understood? The ducklings replied. <coughs> the ducklings call the ugly duckling into a field full of ripe yellow wheat. Hey! I'm over here! Hey, 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 hey! Over here! 
With their yellow coloring, the other ducklings could hide better amidst the yellow wheat, but the ugly duckling's gray coloring stood out. In tag, or hide and seek, the ugly duckling was always it. <laughs> Looking into the pond, the ugly duckling could see his scruffy image. Isn't fair. It isn't fair. How come I'm the only ugly one? Just some trick of the gods? Looking at the yellow wheat field and the farmland that seemed to go on forever, the ugly duckling thought that somehow there must be some friend for him somewhere. He plucked up his courage and told the mother duck how he felt. My, a voyage, but there are so many dangerous things in the world. Nevertheless, while the rest of the family were still asleep, the ugly duckling left home. Passing through the familiar wheat fields, he entered a large forest where he encountered a huge dog. Hmm? The dog stared at the ugly duckling then went on his way. I'm so ugly, even the dog can't stand looking at me. <laughs> the ugly duckling grew sadder and sadder, but he kept prodding along. Finally, he came to a small house. A cat and a hen lived there. Hello, may I come in? He asked the cat. What are you good for? I can swim. If it doesn't help catch mice, it's totally useless. Can you lay a lot of eggs if you can't? Who needs you? The cat was furious. The hen ill-tempered. That night, the ugly duckling slept out back on a bed of straw. Looks like there's just no place for me to go. It was so cold in the straw. The ugly duckling shivered all night. The next morning, the ugly duckling left that house. He walked for days and days. I've been walking for so long. I'm hungry. Quack, quack, quack. Just then, a vast lake unfolded before his eyes. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. His spirits restored, the ugly duckling swam about as happily as he had at home, diving for small insects to eat. Eventually came the cold winter. The lake began to freeze over. Insects became scarce. Finally, there was no food left. The ugly duckling lived by eating the remaining roots of weeds until he lost his strength and collapsed. Look, father. A hunter and his son found the fallen duckling. The poor thing. The hunter and his son took the ugly duckling back to their home. The fire was burning merrily in the fireplace. <gasps> oh, where am I? I've been saved! But now that the ugly duckling was awake, oh. a small boy tried to pick it up. <coughs> the ugly duckling had grown much larger since it was born. It spread its wings and beat them about knocking over a vase and sending the tableware and a sack of flour flying. Hey, stop! Thinking that the hunter's son meant to bully him, the ugly duckling fled in a panic. Time passed, and then the long-awaited spring arrived. 
insects and fish returned to the lake, and now the ugly duckling had grown big enough to catch fish. In the spring sunlight, a flock of giant white birds came to the lake and landed there one after another. They were exquisitely beautiful, with pure white feathers. Ah, oh, what beautiful birds! I wonder if they would be friends with me. They'd probably turn me down, but it doesn't matter. I'll be brave and ask them anyway. So the ugly duckling addressed the beautiful white birds. Please, let me join you. What do you think happened? Oh dear, you're all alone. Do come swim with us. The ugly duckling was astonished by such kind words. And then, looking down in the water, it saw the reflection of a gorgeous white swan. Ah, was I always such a beautiful bird? Its heart pounded with excitement. And now the ugly duckling took wing, flying up into the sky along with its new companions. What gorgeous swans! Look how the sun is reflected off their wings. After many years of suffering, the ugly duckling had at last found happiness. Proving, as the ugly duckling thought to itself, that one must never, ever give up. One fine afternoon, Alice was in the garden, looking at the flowers. It was a warm day, and she grew sleepy. Suddenly, a rabbit crossed right in front of her eyes. A white rabbit, wearing a vest and carrying a watch on a chain. Oh me! Oh my! I'm terribly late! said the white rabbit as he scurried along. What on earth was happening? Alice jumped up and followed the white rabbit. Uh, Mr. Rabbit! Oh, Mr. Rabbit! Wait! Wait! Where are you running to so fast? She chased him all the way into the forest. Whereupon, she fell into a deep hole. Very deep and very dark and apparently endless. Or so she thought. Just then, she landed at the bottom. It was a large room with doors all over. The white rabbit went out one of the doors. When Alice looked through the door, she saw in the distance a fountain in an exquisite garden. Alice tried to follow, but the door was simply too small for her to pass through. Saddened, Alice began to weep. Her tears filled the room and became an ocean. She almost drowned. She swam on the ocean of tears and eventually reached shore. There she found many animals who had also swum there, drying themselves in the sun. There was a duck and an eagle and a dodo. Just then, Alice saw the white rabbit disappear into a mysterious forest. I have to follow that white rabbit! She said, and did so, into the mysterious forest of a mysterious land. She followed the white rabbit all the way back to his home. Oh, my, my, my! I've lost my gloves! If I don't hurry, I'll be dreadfully late! The rabbit oh! was agitated oh! indeed. I'll help you look oh! for them. Alice entered the rabbit's home. In the first room she entered, she found a box of cookies marked, Eat Me. It says eat, so I'm going to eat them. Mm. And eat them she did, mm. whereupon... Ah. Oh dear, Alice began to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Soon she was so big she couldn't get out of the house. What should I do now? So Alice tried a different cookie. 
This one made her smaller and smaller and smaller, until at last she was barely seven centimeters tall. And now I'm smaller than a rat! As she chased it, Alice heard it say, Now I will be late! Oh no! Must hurry, hurry, hurry! And off it ran, in a very great hurry indeed! Mr. Rabbit! Wait! Where are you going? Where are you going? Alice gave chase, but the seven centimeter tall girl could hardly catch up. Eventually, she became lost in the mysterious forest, and she so wanted to return to that beautiful garden. Suddenly, she heard someone singing a strange song. <laughs> She went to look and saw a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom. Please tell me, which way should I go? Asked Alice of the caterpillar. The caterpillar made no answer, but merely continued to talk nonsense. Then it said something important. Eat the right side, you'll grow taller. Eat the opposite side, you'll grow shorter. Alice accordingly ate the left side of a mushroom. And she grew bigger, regaining her original size. Hmm, which way should I go, I wonder? Thus, she wandered in the woods. Her next encounter was with a Cheshire cat perched up on a branch, huge, striped like a tiger, and grinning broadly, very like a person. Please, Mr. Cheshire Cat, which way should I go? The Cheshire Cat replied, To the left, where the Mad Hatter lives, to the right, the March Hare. But really, they're both a little, shall we say, off. Alice was perplexed, but she had to keep going. She had to choose, so off she went, to the left. In the Mad Hatter's garden, there was a large tree beneath which the Mad Hatter and the March Hare were having a tea party. Seated between them was a Dormouse. Hoping to be included in the tea party, Alice approached. But when the Mad Hatter consulted his watch... Ah! Oh no! What's the matter? Asked Alice. My watch! It's two days late! He cried and immediately disassembled his watch. To repair it, one might have thought, but instead he began to spread butter over it. He also tried to cram the Dormouse into the teapot. Mad indeed was the Hatter. Ah, this is insane! I've had enough of this completely mad tea party! I can't stand this! And off went Alice once again to find the beautiful garden. In the forest, she came across a tree with a strange door in it. She entered, and there, in front of her eyes, that exquisite garden, the spectacular fountain, the many splendid flowers, truly a magnificent garden. She saw three playing cards, the gardeners, mightily busy, painting white roses red. We planted white roses instead of red by mistake. If the queen finds out, we'll be in terrible trouble. Just then, up came a grand procession of card soldiers, escorting the queen. Hmm? Gazing at the roses, she realized that they were originally white. Those three gardeners, off with their heads! In this land, anything the queen disliked was a capital offense. Then, the queen noticed Alice. Little girl, can you play croquet? Why, yes, I can, your majesty. Alice's reply was properly polite. If she offended the queen, who knows what might happen? In fact, this was Alice's first game of croquet, and she played poorly. Understandable since the mallets were flamingos and the balls hedgehogs. Everyone tried their hardest to please the queen. If she was displeased in the slightest, it was off with his head. Soon she tired of croquet. Time for the trial. The defendant is Alice, said the queen of hearts. Alice was shocked. But I haven't done anything wrong, said Alice, but no one listened to her. 
It was that Alice who ate my tarts. No question at all. I don't know anything about it. Why, this cart is a fraud. What are you saying? Off with her head and be quick about it. Cried the Queen of Hearts. The card soldiers rushed at Alice, trying to catch her. Their numbers were many, their faces fierce. Alice ran for her life. She ate the last bite of mushroom, whereupon Alice grew gigantic. They were all shocked. I'm not afraid of you. You're nothing but a pack of cards. Alice was now so huge, she knocked them all flat, one or more at a time. But suddenly Alice began to shrink again, until soon she was the same little girl she had been moments earlier. Now catch that girl and behead her! The Queen of Hearts and the hordes of spear-carrying card soldiers charged after Alice. Alice ran for her life, but finally they had her surrounded at last. She was done for. And so it seemed. And then... She woke up. Alice had fallen asleep in her own garden. Her elder sister was calling out, It's tea time! And that was the end of Alice's adventures in Wonderland. <laughs>